glued to. Get it straight. Let's look at an example for uh, laminar flow in a pipe. Uh, we know this is kind of a rare case because usually the velocities dictate that it's um, higher Reynolds number or turbulent conditions, but uh, there are some cases, and we'll look at this one, there's some problems on these that are kind of interesting. So we're saying it's laminar and it's fully developed, which is um, basically saying that uh, the um, um, parabola velocity distribution is happening here. Doesn't really matter that much because they tell us what the shear stress is. In this case, it's 1.85 pounds per square foot. So we want to know what the pressure gradient dpdx is in uh, three cases. So they want to they want to see the effect of gravity basically here. So they want to do horizontal flow, which is as it's drawn, but they also want to see uh, um, vertical up and vertical down flow. So um. This tells us that we're going to use the uh, pressure drop across a length and equate that to the shear stress, which is how we looked at flow um, for the case of laminar conditions in class. And um, because we're doing the vertical up and the vertical down, we're going to need to depart from horizontal, obviously, so we'll need that sine term. So here's the equation that um, we found where we have this uh, top term is the pressure drop across the pipe, but it's adjusted here, because remember gamma, this gamma term in here is the uh, rho g term that has to do with the change in pressure due to hydrostatic pressure changes in a non-horizontal pipe. So uh, if we equate that to the shear term, just like we did in lecture, we have the equation that can get us going here, and we simply need to rearrange it a little bit. So we don't know how long the pipe is, but we can work per unit length. So we can say deep, the pressure gradient is approximately um, negative delta P over L, using the convention that pressure drop in flow direction is, is negative. Uh, that's just where this negative comes from. And otherwise, it's just some algebra where we rearrange our terms and try to get this uh, pressure drop expression by itself here. And what we're left with is this term here, negative 2 times the shear stress over R over gamma, remember, which is rho g times sine of theta. And we can also change that into 4 over the diameter of the pipe. That's just taking a radius and changing it into a diameter. So uh, we've got what we need, this equation here. And we can now give it the three expressions. So for the horizontal case, sine is, is, is given, or theta is given with respect to the horizontal axis. So first case is uh, zero here. And so we uh, simply get uh, the four tau over d term. Just plug in these values and we get negative uh, 7.4. Get some kind of interesting units, pounds for a foot squared per foot. Remember, we did everything on a per foot basis here. Now, if we have vertical flow upward, then that means that our theta is equal to 90 degrees. That means that sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So this term sticks around, and we actually get an appreciable effect here, where we get quite a bigger pressure drop, which means it's harder to push the water uphill or up the pipe, right? So that makes a lot of sense. It should be a, should be very different to move the water horizontally versus upward vertically. And lastly, as you would expect, when we have um, the downward flow, then sine is negative, or theta is negative 90 degrees, so sine of negative theta negative becomes a negative 90 degrees, becomes a negative one. We get a positive contribution of the of the of gravity here and so in fact we get uh, easy we get it easy to move the water downhill so uh, as you can ex as you would expect uh, gravity plays no role in the first one it hurts the flow in the second one and it helps the flow in the third one it's quite a big difference so you can see how that would change things if you're moving water through a building or through a town where you're moving up and down